Can you hear me? Okay. Um, my parents split before I was three years old, and I don't remember them ever being together. Um, Mom stayed in her hometown of Mission, Texas, and my father remarried and moved up to New York, living on East 63rd Street for a decade. Uh, my brother and I saw him one weekend in 10 years, the weekend I would have had a bar mitzvah. My parents' clashing views on education, religion, and culture uh, gave me uh, a constant state of anxiety. Ultimately, I did move into, ultimately I did move into dad's urban orbit in a way, attending Princeton rather than uh, the University of Texas, which was the school uh, of the maternal side of my family. My mother paid all the tuition while my father paid zilch and bragged continually about his son, the Princetonian. The rancor between them was so deep that I kept them apart at my graduation in 1980. I settled in Brooklyn after Princeton for a career in journalism. I wrote to Mom weekly, letters that became more poignant after her cancer diagnosis in 1981. My father and I had sporadic, uneasy contacts punctuated by years of silence. My mother died in 1984, age 63. My father outlived her by an astonishing 34 years. We finally established a workable pattern of meeting, typically brunch. Two hours gave us enough time for awkward conversation. Even after my mother's early death, my parents' short and woeful marriage came back to me time and again. Here's an example. Six months before my father died in, at 92 in 2018, he called me to find out the date that he and my mother were divorced. He needed the information as his next wife, at least his third, worked to increase his military pension from his time on Okinawa during World War II. Well, you were one of the parties there, not me, I said, both amused and annoyed at this request. The divorce papers had been mislaid, he replied, and moves from Texas to New York and eventually to Nyack. He hoped I could apply my sleuthing skills to dig up the details. With some reluctance, I agreed to do this. Uh, I knew I'd be walking into an emotional minefield. Never, uh, never could I imagine, 40 years after I last lived in Hidalgo County, Texas, that I would be dealing with the district court in Edinburgh to request this document. But I pulled up my big boy pants and did what I had to do. The divorce took place around 1962 in Hidalgo County, right on the Rio Grande. And the records weren't online, they were from so long ago. So I called the courthouse and spoke to a woman who took my details and said she would call me back if she found anything. I pictured her rummaging around in boxes in the basement of the courthouse, a little bit like the last scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark. After several days, my father called me. He was very anxious to find out if I turned up anything. Well, I hadn't. I told him, I could give you the number of the contact, and you could call her, I said. No, you have the right accent to talk to her, he said. A typical comment that would have riled me 40 years ago as a dig at my South Texas roots, but I just let it go as a point of pride now. After a week, the court official called and said she had found the documents from 1962, uh, which she scanned and emailed me. I thanked her and immediately called my father with the news and the date. I also mailed him a printout of the divorce decree. He deeply appreciated my South Texas document discovery, and he did, in fact, get a retroactive payment on his military pension. The document unsettled me. I read about my brother and me when we were toddlers. There was the child support order, payment of legal fees, and other details that I know all too well from the end of my own marriage. I read it once and never again. I needed no reminder of the put-downs, rancor, and silences that followed in the decades after the divorce. I can envision that day, my mother taking time off from her job as a secretary at an insurance agency to drive to Edinburgh in her Chevy Corvair. She did what she had to do to support her family, smoked a Winston, and returned to work. Knowing mom, she must have made a, she must have sent a thank you note to her lawyer. To close the loop, I mailed a handwritten note to the court official thanking her for a job well done. 
The weekend afterward, my father and I shared lunch at a Chinese restaurant with his wife and my significant other. That was the last time the four of us were ever together before he died. Thank you.